I think we're uh, going to move on now to member statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, today, I'd like to recognize the work of SWAC. SWAC is a Sudbury Workers Education and Advocacy Centre. It's an organization of workers helping workers, and they're committed to improving the lives and working conditions of people in low wage and unstable employment. Melody Barube, SWEAC's outreach worker, explained to me that Ontario low wage workers are diverse, that they're single mothers who are living paycheck to paycheck, that they're students trying to get out of debt, and that they're seniors who can barely afford to stay in their homes. Many of the low wage workers that SWEAC and Melody help are working in unstable jobs and are vulnerable to exploitation. One of these vulnerable and precarious workers is Michaela Bircher. Michaela is a young worker from Sudbury, living on her own, earning minimum wage, struggling to make ends meet while trying to save for college. SWAC knows or helps workers like Michaela know and understand their rights. Workers like Michaela know firsthand that bad employers will break the law because they know they can get away with it. Michaela's former employer treated her so badly for calling in sick that Michaela still has a fear at the back of her mind whenever she needs a day off. And it's frustrating for SWIAC and workers like Michaela that this government wants to make it even worse for those worst case scenario, bottom of the barrel employers to get away with mistreating workers. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, November 1st, marks the beginning of Canada's Down Syndrome Awareness Week. This week, we celebrate Ontarians with Down Syndrome. We celebrate their abilities, their love and affection, and all the joy and colour they bring to the lives of their families, their communities, and Canada as a whole. We also celebrate those who work on their behalf, including the provincial Down Syndrome organizations who work connecting families together, providing information and resources, and reaching out to new parents. New parents just meeting their child with Down Syndrome especially need that support. Despite the value those with Down syndrome bring to our province, negative stereotypes persist, and parents are often greeted with a discouraging picture of their future. New parents don't need condolences. They need our congratulations and our understanding that while being a new parent is often overwhelming, there is support and resources available, and they can do it. And more than anything, they need to know, in Ontario, we value those who are differently abled. They are a treasured part of our community. That is why this week, from November 1st to 7th, we celebrate those with Down syndrome. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week, during a town hall meeting, I had the chance to meet and interact with citizens from Brampton from all five of my ridings. We took the time to listen to their concerns, and to no one's surprise, Mr. Speaker, one of their main concerns was the cancellation of the university. The Markham campus was supposed to start construction, and as a matter of fact, they were supposed to start digging this fall. Residents and students are unhappy that they will not get a university in Brampton and will continue to have to spend hours and hours every day commuting to other cities across uh, southern Ontario for post-secondary education. Now, with the population of Brampton of between 18 to 24-year-olds continuing to increase, the 2011 and 20 Thank you very much. 2021 in Brampton, the demand for a university education is and will continue to increase. Business owners are unhappy with this as well. It has been estimated that the university campus in Brampton would have created thousands of good paying jobs, and estimates from the region of Peel and the city of Brampton also show that there would be an ongoing economic impact of over $286 million in Brampton alone. The Ford government is once again neglecting the great people of Brampton. The short-sighted decision is going to cost the city hundreds of millions of dollars in economic activity and thousands of good-paying jobs, and that is not what the people of Brampton want. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Centre. 
I am honored and extremely proud to announce that next week, Mr. Stanisław Karczewski, Speaker of the Senate of Poland, and Mr. Krzysztof Grzelczyk, Consul General of Poland, will be visiting the legislature. This year marks Poland's 100th Independence Day, commemorating the country's regained independence on the 11th of November 1918, after 123 years of partitions and rule by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. It is one of the most important national holidays in Poland and to Polish Canadians. It is a day to reflect on their history and an opportunity to express their patriotic sentiment. Historically, Poles suffered under foreign occupation, discrimination, persecution, and massive de deportations. This only strengthened the Polish spirit, and they never gave up fighting. So today, I would like to pay respect to the millions of Poles murdered in German concentration camps and Russian gulags, and to the countless and often unknown and forgotten Poles who fought for independence and freedom all over the world by saying the famous Polish phrase, Cześć i chwała bohaterom. For the first time in modern history, Poland is a free country. After decades spent fighting for independence, for their native language, and for their own identity, Poles can finally enjoy their freedom and be proud of their homeland. Love li long live strong and independent Poland. Member Statements, the member for Toronto, St. Paul's. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I will not support the Doug Ford Conservative Government Bill 47. This bill is ripping two paid sick days away from Ontarians, away from the residents in Toronto, St. Paul's. Bill 47 is an attack on the most vulnerable Ontarians. Furthermore, by stripping away the promised $15 an hour minimum wage increase, the Conservatives are stealing $2,000 out of the pockets of the lowest paid workers. Shame. I'm going to ask the member to withdraw. Yeah. Withdraw. Yeah, you have to stand up so your microphone comes on and then say withdraw. Withdraw. Your conservative actions violate Ontarians' trust. How are Ontarians supposed to believe that their lives matter to this power-hungry government if you keep slashing Ontarians where it hurts the most, their wallets and their health care? The Conservatives must stop bulking up the back pockets of their 1% big bosses, CEOs and legal buddies and start paying Ontarians. What about Dora? She's been working 15 years in the same job the same job, and she's still part-time. She needs her two paid sick days. She needs them for her physical and mental health. Workers in low-income jobs, part-time, precarious, contracted, impoverished workers, disabled workers, single parents, they should matter. They shouldn't have to choose between sickness or having to get a death certificate for their dead mother before her body's even cold. Ontario isn't open for business. It's open for poverty. Shame. I'm going to remind all members that uh, when they're referring to uh, another member to refer to them by either their riding name or their uh, ministerial responsibility. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the House today. Speaker, um, several years ago I was on a, a, a commission uh, supporting uh, Francis Lankin and Munir Sheikh to review social assistance in this province, and it took well over 100 days to do that because it was such a, a complex uh, uh, review that affects the lives of so many Ontarians. Um, this government uh, is attempting to do a social assistance review in 100 days, and many people are relying on the outcomes. Last week, I sat down with my community and uh, in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood and discussed the growing issue of poverty in the community and in the province of Ontario. I spoke to B and Teresa, and they told me that living conditions have worsened considerably due to the conservative cuts to social assistance and the basic income pilot. Just yesterday, the Daily Bread Food Bank released a report that is outlining that in the inner suburbs of Toronto, in Scarborough and in Etobicoke, food bank usage is up and people's dependency is up. There was one silver lining. The report notes that the $14 an hour minimum wage has uh, seen a decrease in food bank usage in the past year. So that is definitely a positive sign. 
Mr. Speaker, I am calling on this government to stop cutting services and to support people who rely on the services and the supports like ODSP and OW. Thousands of people in my riding rely on that, and I am calling on them to be thoughtful in their choices ahead. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for mississauga Mountain. Today, I'll be talking about Diwali, the festival of light, which is celebrated by over 1.1 billion Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains around the world. It is a day of hope and new beginning for Hindus who believe the goddess Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, will enter their clean homes. Businessmen open your account. This is the time people offer prayer for health, prosperity, and more importantly, wealth. Through Ramayan, a festival reinforces the idea that good prevails over evil. Day is also celebrated as Bandi Chor Divas, a prisoner liberation day when the sixth Guru, Guru Gop, Hargobind Singh Ji, was liberated from Gwalia Fort and took 52 prisoners to freedom along with him. The lightning of candle is essentially significant. It refers to knowledge, wisdom, and prosperity, the prevalence of knowledge and wisdom over ignorance. Diwali, and not only Diwali, every festival and isn't and should not be only about firecrackers, new clothes, or sharing gifts or sweets. The true essence of Diwali is Vasudev Kutum, a Sanskrit phrase which means the world is one family, and it should be about celebrating together with everyone. This Diwali, let's spread the light and joy not only to friends and family, but reach out to everyone, and especially those who are less fortunate. I sincerely hope this Diwali brings you, us, and everyone endless joy, good health, and prosperity. I wish everyone happy Diwali. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. Member for London Fanshawe. Speaker, it is always an honour to rise and speak on behalf of the good people of Lenham Fanshawe. Today, I want to highlight the local businesses that have been investing in our province and creating good jobs for the people in my riding. This past weekend, I visited the celebration of two businesses expanding. Starlum North America, an Austrian-based company, invested in expanding their operations in London. It will be the largest single-step expansion in Starlum's history, and it happened right here in London. They specialize in custom silicone products and produce everything from automotive parts to medical devices, waterproof seals, and baby soothers. This will create, be creating 120 good-paying jobs for the people of London Fanshawe. Science Tech has been an employing constituents of mine for over 40 years. The company reinvested back into our community and built a brand new addition. The facility will feature new dedicated testing labs, expanded manufacturing space, and a new shipping dock for larger products and projects. A large part of their business is solar simulation, which helps develop more efficient solar panels. And like Starlum, they will also be hiring more staff. This is a positive addition to our community, and it serves as an example of how businesses were already confident in investing in Ontario. I want to thank Starlum and Science Tech for being good business neighbours in our community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This past Monday, United Jewish Affairs UJA and CJA, Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, held a community-wide vigil to honour the victims of the horrific tragedy in Pittsburgh. More than 5,000 residents of all religions were in attendance, and Premier Doug Ford spoke on behalf of the Ontario government and stated the following. For us to come together as a community, to grieve, to remember, and to stand united in the face of anti-Semitism and hatred, said the Premier. He also said, our government of Ontario and the people of Ontario are standing shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish community, our friends and our neighbours. And I'm continuing his quote, I can tell you, my friends, we will always, always stand with you and we will never, ever waver. I want to just list the, the victims' names, Dr. Jerry Rabinovitz, uh, Richard Gottfried, brothers Cecil Rosenthal and David Rosenthal, husband and wife Bernice and Sylvan Simon, Melvin Wax, Daniel Stein, Irving Younger, Rose Malinger, and of course Joyce Feinberg from Toronto. Um, she had been a member of Holy Blossom Temple in Toronto where she got married to her husband Stephen Feinberg, and she graduated with a degree in social psychology from the University of Toronto. 
uh, before moving to Pittsburgh, where she was a researcher at the University of Pittsburgh. She was known to have a gentle heart and was often worrying about the needs of others before her own. She leaves behind a brother who lives in Thornhill and two sons and a congregation that will miss her dearly. May her memory be a blessing. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Scarborough Centre. Mr. Speaker, last Sunday, the Greek community of Toronto celebrated their 109th anniversary as a strong and vibrant organization. But that was not the only thing that they were celebrating. Greeks across the world were celebrating Ohi Day. In Toronto, Greeks celebrated with a parade and a wreath laying ceremony that I had the honour of attending and speaking at. Ohi Day commemorates a key date in modern Greek history. On the 28th of October, 1940, Fascist Italy demanded that the Greek government allow them occupation of strategic military points on Greek territory or face war. The answer of Greek Prime Minister Ioannis Metaxas was simple, ohi. Ohi means no in Greek. On the morning of October 28th, Greeks across the country poured into the streets, shouting ohi, irrespective of their political affiliations. While many countries celebrate the end of wars, ohi day is different. It marks the celebration of the beginning of a war and Greece's courage to stand against the overwhelming odds of the Axis powers. They did so for one reason, reason, freedom. The Greeks would not be occupied. This day was a key point in the unfolding of the war as the Italians found Greece to be a tough and resilient enemy. Greece against all odds was not an easy target and in recognition of their resistance, Churchill famously said, hence we will not say that the Greeks fight like heroes, but that heroes fight like Greeks. On Ohi Day and every day, I am proud to be a member of this strong and proud community, a community that always stands up for what we believe in. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements.